slip and we let those things slide because that's just Brother Derek, you know. And, and then we stop, we stop receiving from it like we need to because our perspective has shifted. Are you hearing me? So, so why I did that was is we get our perspective right again. Whoever is going to preach the word. You understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. And because we need all that God has for us. I don't know about you, but I need all that he has for me. I can't live without him tonight. I don't want to live without him. I know what life was like before Christ. I know what it's like after him. Amen. My worst day in the ministry is better, or is better than my... Let me say this. My worst day in the ministry is greater than my best day in the world. Are you hearing me? The worst day in the ministry is better than the greatest day than it, when, it, when I was in the world. Amen. So we're going to kick off tonight. And we're going to call this reignite. Say that reignite. The fire in the pulpits again. And Father, we ask you to reignite the fire. Started with us. Reignite the fire in your preachers again. Reignite the fire in our pulpits again. God, awaken us for such a time as this. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. One more hand clap of praise. Come on. You can't give him enough praise. Hallelujah, he's worthy. He's worthy. Those of you online, good to have you. Uh, we're kicking off something here at New Creation. Revival, igniting igniting the fire in the pulpits again. Guess what it starts? It starts with the headship and it comes down the line. God, come on. We need some preachers that's on fire again. And I pray that God will use us in this hour. Amen. We believe it's the last hour. People people will fight you on this one. They'll, they'll, they can say what they want. But I'm going to tell you closer than you've ever been. <laughs> they was talking about it two years ago or, or, or 2,000 years ago saying the same thing. But you 2,000 years closer, whatever it is, amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be ready. So if you go to Acts chapter 4, I'm going to get into this real quick. Verse 20, number 23. And it says this in verse 23. And he being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And the Lord, and said, Lord, thou art God. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. I want you to look at this. I want to camp right there for just a second. I want to read that again. It's a good thing I'm the pastor. Because <laughs> I can kind of stop and I can I can kind of wait and, and and go back and Amen. <laughs> amen. Now watch this. I want you to follow this right here. It's a very important time that we're in. Very important time. It says that who by the mouth of his servant David, in verse twenty five, David said, or who who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Are you seeing that? The rulers stood up and gathered together against the Lord and the Lord's Christ, which is the Lord's anointed. Man, I'm going I'm to camp right there just let that sink in for just a second. See, I can take my time. For the truth, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and with the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that we may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal. That signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak the word of God with boldness. I want you to let that sink in for a second. They began to speak the word of God. Say that boldness. 
Look at your neighbor and say boldness. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. One heart and one soul. And neither of them that that all the things which were possessed was his own, and they had all things in common. And with great power he gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And now listen to this in verse 34. And none of them, neither of them among them, or, or neither was there any among them that lacked. Are you seeing that? Neither was there any among them that lacked. None that lacked. If you go on down through there, I mean, he's talking about the apostles, and he was talking about they sold all their stuff, and they come and laid it at the apostles' feet. That was the time that they were in. But there was nobody that was with them that lacked anything. Amen. They had no lack. Say that, no lack. See, there's something important about getting together in one mind and one accord and, and, and getting into God's way and getting into God's vision and then getting in, you understand what I'm saying, and getting into the flow about what, of, of what God is doing. There's something important that gets released when you get into the flow of what God's doing. Amen. There's something that will only happen when you get into one mind and one accord. There's something that will only happen when you get into one mind and one accord, one voice. Amen. And with great power, he said, but there, there was none of them that lacked. For as many as had possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. I mean, you're looking at a time right here, and he goes on down through there, and he was talking about Ananias and Sapphira. Now watch this. Right on down, and I'm not preaching on Ananias and Sapphira tonight, but I'm preaching on this boldness tonight, okay? I'm preaching on boldness tonight because what happens is, is when we begin to get filled with the Holy Ghost again, what will happen, the first thing that you'll notice is your boldness will return to you. Are you hearing me? The boldness that he wants you to stand in will begin to return to you. No, He said the righteous are as bold as a lion, okay? Now, now, now you got to understand this. What happens is when your tank begins to get low or when you begin to, amen, when you, when you begin to run a little bit spiritually low, all of a sudden you're not as bold as you once was or or here's the greatest weapon of the enemy. I want to share something with you real quick. Because he said in the last days you better watch it. Many of them would come up to be Christ. They would say they would be many Christ. And many of them would claim to be. Right? But they would. They, you don't look here. You don't look there, he said. But he said, what did he say? He said, don't go running after this one and don't go running after that one. Amen. Now watch this. The time that we're living in is the greatest time of deception that we've ever been in. You better hear me tonight. The greatest time of deception that we've ever been in. Amen. You better know the character of the man of God or the woman of God that you follow. You better know their character because he said a good tree can't bear bad fruit. A bad tree cannot bear. I don't care what kind of anointing you're walking in. I don't care what kind of I don't care what kind of stuff you happen in. I don't even care what kind of miracles is working through you. What I'm looking at is the character of a man. What I'm looking at is the fruit of the tree. What I'm looking at is who that person is. What I'm looking at is the DNA of God in that person. What I'm looking at is that is that the Father is that one of God's children or is that one of the children of the devil because there's a lot of people that are walking in a lot of things and their character don't line up are you hearing me tonight their character don't line up what am I looking at I'm looking at the character amen I'm looking at the fruit on the tree praise God a good tree he said cannot bear bad fruit a bad tree cannot bear good fruit we're in the greatest time that we could ever be in but he said this he said that in, in Revelation he said there would be a great harlot that would be set over the waters watch this a great harlot that would be set over the waters the Lord showed me this you can judge this prophets you can write this down you can judge what I'm saying to you but he said in the last day what's this in, he said this right here he said right now there's fixing to be an attack on the church watch this but this is not going to be an attack like you think this is going to be an attack to see the church compromise that the enemy is sending ambushments into the church and into the body of Christ. What for? To water it down and to get it to compromise. To get her to compromise. Where do you get that at? Well, look here. When Israel, Israel was blessed. Israel was blessed. Now watch. 
now watch this. You couldn't curse what's blessed. You can't curse what God's blessed. You can't do it. He said that under the blessing that if you curse me, you're going to be cursed. I don't have to worry about that. I bless you. You curse me, you curse. If you bless me, you're blessed. Why? Because I'm walking in something. Amen. Amen. So I don't got to worry about that. But what, well, here's what will happen. Here's what happened with Israel. When they got out there on the battlefield, they were away from their wives. They were on the battlefield. They were in the heat of war. They were in the heat of war, so they got hungry. They got malnourished. I mean, they got, they, not malnourished, but they got hungry. They got sleepy. They got tired because they had been to war. They had been in the middle of the battle, and they had been in this intense warfare. So what happened was is they began to weaken in some areas. So the enemy knew that, so they come up with this plot with the prophet. said, how can we get them? We can't, we can't destroy them because God's got his hand on them. When God's got his hand on you, honey, let me tell you something. They can't destroy you. Are you hearing me tonight? Come on, come on, come on. Amen. So God had his hand on Israel. Watch this. God had his hand on Israel. So the enemy even knew that they could not curse Israel. They could not defeat them. So here was the plan of the enemy. The enemy said this right here. The enemy said, all right, here's what we'll do. If we can send harlots out, if we can send prostitutes out and parade them before them, parade them before the the army of Israel, if we can send the ambushments out, and parade them before the, the, the women, is what I'm saying, the harlots. At that time, it was a physical, physical woman. He said, because if we can get them to compromise, if we can cause them to start committing adultery and sleeping with the ones that God told them not to, if we can cause them to do this, we will cause God's judgment to come upon their sin. Because they knew they couldn't defeat them, so they could try to make them compromise. So when they compromised, uh, what, so when they compromised, they understood that that sin would bring judgment because disobedience to God would bring judgment. We don't hear that preaching. That ain't good. I know, I know y'all ain't wanting to give me an offering right now, but I'm just telling you, it's a serious time that we're in right now. Amen. God said, I'm fixing to bring a revival back to my pulpits again. I'm, I'm fixing to bring a fire back to my pulpits again and ignite this fire that's going to that's gonna stand to preach my word with boldness again. That's going to stand, that ain't going to compromise, that's going to love what I love, that's going to hate what I hate. Amen. When a revival starts to awaken in your spirit, guess what? You'll start to hate the things that God hates. You'll start to love the things that He loves. You'll start to run after the things that He runs after. You'll start to push things away from you that you know that he, he don't approve of you'll start to do that but where does it start at it starts with a, a revival it starts with an, an, a fire being ignited in us once again amen so when he sends these ambushments out what happens he said that the great harlot in revelation I don't know why I'm getting into this but he said the great harlot in revelation would set up over the waters what calling the young anointed ones to come into a bed of compromise. To come into a bed of compromise. Because if he could get them into a bed of compromise. Now listen, a bed of compromise. We're talking about a bed. What happens in a bed of compromise? You lay in it. A bed of compromise is not something you visit. It's something you lay in. And when you become, when you become, when you, when you get into this bed, right? And that's the goal of the enemy is to come into a bed to get you drawn into a bed of compromise. To compromise your faith, to compromise your integrity, to compromise what makes you holy. Are you hearing me today? We are a holy people, a holy nation. Amen. We're a holy nation. We're a peculiar people set apart for His work. Amen. Set apart, a holy nation, citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. Is anybody with me tonight? So he says right here, he says that the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his Christ. This could be a prophetic word right here. I didn't realize this until I started, and I'd never seen it like that before. But the rulers of the earth stood up. And when the rulers of the earth stood up, they came together against the Lord Jesus Christ and his anointed. Are you hearing me? If we're not living in these times greater right now than we've ever been, I'm telling you what, then, then we're missing it because you better look around. You better look what's going on. You better look at the attacks. You better look at the attacks in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. You better look at the attacks on the church. You better look what's going on. Amen. I know this ain't popular preaching, but, but still, 
now. Amen. So he said, the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and his cross. For the truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom has appointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate and, Gent and the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant to thy servants, this is what we're going to pray, grant to thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word with boldness again. Grant to your servants that we may, see, even they prayed, the apostles prayed, that, and that's why Jesus told them, he said, when you get delivered up, don't worry about what you're going to speak. Don't prepare beforehand what you're going to say. All you got to do is just be ready in that moment. He said, I'll fill your mouth in that moment, and I'll give you the word to speak now we understand when he told the apostles that the apostles were going to face and drink the same cup that Jesus drank out of he said you got you think you can drink the cup that I'm drinking of and guess what they said they said well he said well you're going to drink this cup you're all going to drink this cup and every one of them but John was the, we faced the same kind of death that Jesus faced every one of them drank of his cup So when they prayed, they prayed. They said, "They said, Lord, fill us, give us, a, give us this boldness that we may open our mouth boldly in this moment. That we may open our mouth boldly in this moment to declare Your truth and Your word." He said, "The righteous are as bold as a lion." Now watch this: the righteous are as bold as a lion. So if righteousness is connected to boldness, that means right standing with God has everything to do with boldness in His word. You can't preach his word with boldness if you're compromising in some area. If you start to lose your boldness in an area, if you start to lose your bold witness in an area or your boldness with the word of God, always go back to where you are compromising. Always go back and judge your life. Where are you missing it? Where are you in disobedience? Where are you in sin? Come on, I know what I'm talking about. And, and it ain't got to be some open sin. I'm talking about it could be the, the sin of omission. It could, be, it could be you just being disobedient in an area that you know that you're supposed to be obedient in. See, because he said the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous don't have nothing to fear. The righteous has nothing to fear. That's why he says, Grant to your servants that we may open our mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Grant unto us that we may make known the mystery of the gospel with no fear of people. When I got delivered from people as a preacher, I'm talking about this preacher, look, when I got delivered from the people, from the way that they looked at me, from the way that they talked to me, when I got delivered from them, you're talking about free. I was double free. Hallelujah. When I got free from the people, when I got free from people trying to steer it, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to steer you away, trying to look at you all mean, trying to, you know, when I got free from that, because you love them so much that you want them to be right, you want them to do the right thing, and you're just preaching what God gave you and preaching the Word. That's it. It ain't personal. It ain't personal. Why you want to shoot the messenger? He's just the mailman. We just delivering what God said, that's all. It ain't my fault your life ain't right. It ain't my fault you got to line up in some areas and God ain't letting you stay that way. Not in this house he ain't. You know, just like, just like, hey, just like sometimes you get thinned out, but sometimes when God finna do something great, guess what? He got to thin the ranks out a little bit. He got to get rid of the naysayers and the unbelievers and the ones poking holes in your boat right there. I'm talking about they poking while you all rolling. They back behind the scenes poking holes in it. Yeah. But God's raising up an army here. That's what? I hear you poking holes in my boat. I'm going to expose you. I hear you poking holes. I'm going to confront you. I don't care who you are. This boat's rowing. This boat's going somewhere. New creation life, we going somewhere. Praise God, we going somewhere. I hear you talking about my church, my pastors, my leaders. We're going to have a problem. We're going to step outside. We're going to roll up the sleeves. I'm telling you, put on the boxing gloves. See, we need to get some holy boldness about us again. We need to get some right, act right about us again. We need to get some care about us again. Come on, Pastor, you're preaching to us tonight. You know, I was sitting back there, and I'll tell you something on myself. Can I be transparent with you? I always try to be transparent with you so you can see that, guess what? We fight the same fight as you do. 
We fight the same war that you do. We have to walk by faith just like you do. And I was sitting back there, and I looked on the camera system. I just checked it to see who was out front, just to see. I do that sometimes just to check on everybody. I looked at it, and the Holy Ghost said this to me. I looked at the people out there. I looked at y'all out there, and you was having joy, and you was, y'all was talking and stuff. And he said this right here to me. I thank God for my father. I thank God for you, Abba Father. I thank God for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for he's a real God. Amen. You know what he told me? He didn't say, son. You know what he said to me? He said, this ain't about you. He, that's exactly how he told me, too. He said, this ain't about you. He was talking about me preaching. He said, this ain't about you. I said, yes, sir, man. All of a sudden, this warmth just came over me. The oil came over me, and I began to get free right there. I began to get filled in that moment. I said, you're right, Lord. It ain't about me. Praise God. <laughs> it ain't my obedience. It ain't about me. It's about you. It's about the people that I'm preaching to. It's about their freedom. It's about the truth that will set men free. Praise God. That's what it's about, Lord. And I praise God that my Father will speak to me like that. He'll speak to me direct. He won't pamper me and, and, and let me stay that way. He won't let let me think I'm all that in a bag of chips. Uh, praise God. He'll remind me that I'm nothing without Him. He'll remind me that I can't stand up here under no, under anything but an anointing of the Holy Ghost. That I can't stand behind His pulpit without His approval. That I can't stand and speak His word without His anointing. Praise God. Neither do I want to stand up here without His anointing. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. See, it ain't about you. It's about Him. Praise God. And when you learn that your life surrendered to Him ain't about you but it's about Him. Your witness for Him, it, is, it ain't about you, but it's about Him. Your obedience to where He's assigned you to is not about you, but it's about Him. When we get free from me, when we get free from you, when you get free from you, you're going to be free. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God said, I'm igniting a fire in my pulpits again. Watch what I'm telling you, church. Watch what I'm telling you. This thing's going to explode. This thing's going to grow. This thing's going to spill out into the community. So we pray that God will fill us with a boldness that we may speak His Word again with boldness. With no fear. Well, what about jail? Well, what about it? I've been there. So, what about this? What about it? I'm already dead. What about death? I've already died. You can't kill what's already dead. How are you going to kill something that's already dead? When you've truly died in Christ, when you've truly been crucified with Him, I'm talking about truly. I'm not talking about holding on to everything. I'm not talking about holding on to one thing. I'm talking about truly being crucified with Christ, resurrected to a new life in Him. When you have truly been crucified with Him, there's nothing else to lose. When you've settled that one in your heart, there's no more fear of death. When you've settled that one, there's no more fear. That death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Where's it at? Where's your sting? Where's your victory? See, even death don't even hold you in bondage no longer. Are you hearing me tonight? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Go to Acts chapter number 11. Verse number 15. And as he began to speak, he said, The Holy Ghost fell on them as at the beginning, as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Yes, we still believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We still believe in the evidence of speaking in tongues. That language that you get, I believe in it wholeheartedly. I'm going to walk in it until the day I leave. Amen. But what's the, real, what's the baptism really for? It's power to be witnesses. It's that I may speak His word with boldness again. When I get filled with the Holy Ghost, I'll be able to speak His word with boldness. I'll be able to proclaim His message again. I'll be able to proclaim His truth again. I'll be an eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, guess what? Your witness changes. Your witness of Jesus Christ will change. Hallelujah. I can preach about Him just like, just like I was there at the cross with Him because I was. Come on. <laughs> Amen. 
I was crucified with him. You were crucified with Christ. And you were raised to a new life in him. Hallelujah. Go to, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 12. Chapter 3, verse number 12. He says this, Seeing then that we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech, not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded until this day remaineth the same veil taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. You're lost. You were lost, but now you're found. You were blind, but now you see. He loved you. Love him because he first loved. He came to you. You didn't come to him. He came to you, and you received what he was offering to you. And now you love him because he first loved you when you were unlovable. He first loved you when you were not worthy. He first loved you when you were mess. He first loved you. Amen. And now, because he loved me, I love him. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 19. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19. Hallelujah. Anybody getting any help tonight? Amen. By next Sunday, we're going to have a full packed out house church. We're thinking to put more chairs in here tomorrow, okay? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 6, number 19, he said, And for me that utterance may, given, may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. I'm going to go back to verse 18. He said, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Uh, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do anyway. For, I, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I speak boldly as I ought to speak. There's something that will happen to you when the Holy Ghost fills you again and when you're in right standing with Him because righteousness is equal to boldness. When your bold, I'm going to say this again. When your boldness is down, when your boldness of witness is down, either your tank's running low or there's some area in your life that you need to look at and you need to get right because He said that you would be bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. That's why the enemy wants you to compromise. If he can get your life to compromise, he can take your boldness and he can take your witness. No longer will you have a fire like you're supposed to have because there's some area in your life that you ain't right. Is that bad? Is that bad preaching? These are things that we need to get right. Say that, get right. When I'm right, see, I'm bold. When I'm right, I can stand on His Word. When I'm in right standing, He's standing with me. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. He says this right here. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant to thy servants. We just read that. That with all boldness that we may speak your word. That with all boldness we may speak your word. And that don't mean I'm yelling. I know I like to yell and stuff sometimes, but that don't mean you're bold. Boldness is boldness. Boldness means I stand. Boldness means I'm not going to compromise and I'm not going to back up from it. This is what the Word said. This is what God has said and that's it. I'm not going with you no other way. This is what God has said. Thus saith the Lord. That's what it is. That's what it's going to be. Amen. 
And this is what I'm going to do. This is why we're talking about earlier, we was talking about in, on Sunday mornings, we're going into a series called Keys of Access. Why are we going into Keys of Access? Because Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom, right? So we're in a kingdom, not the kingdom of darkness, but we're in the kingdom of his dear son. So we're here temporary as pilgrims. You know, those old songs, you, we just a pilgrim passing through. We say that, but there's truth to that. We just a pilgrim pilgrim passing through you know we just a pilgrim passing through for a short time right that I'm a that I'm a citizen of heaven yet I'm here in this earth right so I'm passing through for a short time but this short time I've got to do something and I've got a mission and I've got a vision and I've got something to accomplish here and now amen So he gives you the keys to the kingdom. He gives you keys to access. He shows you things in the word of God. And when the word and when you respond and you act on it, guess what you get? You get what he said that you get. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So God, we pray that you'll give us back our boldness and you'll you'll help us to see in our life where we are not walking righteous and being bold as a lion. Amen. The people in your workplace, the people in your jobs, the people where you and you're in contact with every day, they need to see you as a bold witness. They need to see you. He didn't give you a spirit of timidity. He didn't give you a spirit of fear. He didn't give you those spirits. What he gave you was was a spirit of love and empower and of a sound mind. There's something about love that that, that that there's something about love. The word love. There's something about love when you're walking in love that you can be bold with people without being mean. There's something, there's a grace on boldness. There's a grace on love in God's love. I'm not talking about human love. I'm talking about there's a grace in God's love that will allow you to stand bold with somebody and speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, not how loud and yelling you are, not how much of a scene that you make. I'm talking about by the power of the Spirit. He said, out of your belly would flow rivers of life-giving water. There was a lady, the testimony that I heard, this guy was like a hell's angel. And he was, a, he was a rough biker, killer. I mean, they kill people and all kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell this testimony because it just came to me. And the mother used to allow him to come to the house. He would come out there after being out there on these drunk and, you know, doing all their stuff that they did. She didn't even want to know a lot of the stuff that he did. And he would come home and he'd say, Mama, can I get a bed to sleep in? Yeah, you can. She wouldn't let him bring his stuff there wouldn't let him do his do his stuff there but she would let him come in when he come into that you know we come in off of them binges and all that she would give him a safe place to lay and she'd get him in there true story she'd get him in there she'd feed him that next morning she'd feed him that when he'd get up and she'd set him at the table and she'd say i'm just going to use this name billy now you know that you know that you know the right way that we've taught you about Jesus and we've taught you that the way you're going is not right and you know it. She didn't condemn him though, but she said it in a way that the love had such a boldness and such an impact on him. He said he had to, st he had to finally get out of there. He, he couldn't stay long. He'd stay long enough to eat, but he said, man, just the love that she had for me, he said it would convict me to the point where I had to get out of there. She wasn't beating him up and saying, oh, you're no good dog, you, you no good thing, you know. She didn't have to do none of that. She said, you know the way you're doing is not right. You know, you know what you're doing, son. You know the right way. And you know that Jesus still loves you. You know, I'm just using this as an example. And I might not get every word right, but I'm trying to show you a different. Because sometimes we think boldness. Sometimes we get the idea of boldness. And we get the idea of like, it's this big evangelist that runs in. and Like, like I do sometimes. And jerks off his shirt, you know. And it's Superman's shirt. And, rah, Christ is coming after you. Yeah. You're all going to hell. That might be true. But sometimes we get this idea of boldness and we don't see what boldness really is. Sometimes boldness is like that. Sometimes boldness, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. and they, they like, like Stephen, when he was filled with the Holy Ghost, see, he sat there for a little bit and they started talking. He started talking. If you read the, if you read the story of Stephen when he preached, he preached a, he preached a good message. And he preached in the power of the Holy Spirit and it cut their hearts. And they, by the end of that message, they hated him. They was ready to kill him and they did kill him. They killed him. The stoning of Stephen because he preached a message that cut to their heart. 
He didn't fluff them up, tell them how good they were. He got filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost hit right to the heart of what they were doing and, 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 and had their number. And that's why when he stood up, that's why when after they stoned him, he looked up and he said he said he seen the Son of God standing at the right hand of the Father. And he said, Lord, he said, I, I lay not this sin to their charge. Can you imagine after being hit with rocks like that, him, him sitting there with a the heart of love and so focused on the, on the heavenly on the heavenly mission, so focused on Jesus that he was able to say, guess what? Here it is, Lord. Lord, I, I don't even hold this against them, Lord. And you know it's probably one or two more hits, cracked, crushed his head, and then, then, then boom, his spirit left, and he went on to be with Jesus. There was Saul holding his, arm, holding his, holding his uh, you know, holding his stuff. One that, the one that would get, end up getting saved and going and writing most of the New Testament was standing there at the stoning of Stephen holding the thing, had called the order down to kill him because he thought he was doing God a service. That's why he said right here in the last days, or no, he was just talking about here, but you can relate this to now to where we're at. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers stood up together against the Lord. Now listen, it's the little foxes that spool the vine, church. It's not the big sins. It's not, it's, yeah, the big ones is, is big, but it's the little ones that, that, that the enemy wants to get you because those little ones is what spoils the vine, is what spoils the pure oil, is what spoils, it's what, it's what ruins, it's what causes you to slowly, it's a slow fade. I remember that song. It's a slow fade. It's not a jump. It's a slow fade. When you commit adultery, guess what? It's a slow fade. It's usually you don't just meet somebody and jump in the bed with them. There's things that happen back here and start to start to happen. The little things right here, the little things that's not caught that go on and go on and go on and go on. You hear what I'm saying to you? It's not a, oh, I just jumped in there one day. No, this, this happened way back here. There was things happening back here that you should have dealt with. There was things going on back here that you should have got right, that you should have made right because guess what? Now it's slow fade. Guess what? Guess what? Here it goes. Boom. And when it happens, see, it started way back when. I don't know why I'm on that. That's why these things we can judge and we can correct right. We can correct now. We can get it right now. We can judge yourself now. Judge yourself and you won't be judged. These things are serious, church. It's the little foxes, the little ones that spoil the vine. It's those little sins of omission. It's those little disobedience. It's those times that you're not praying right. It's the times that you're not reading and studying like you should. It's the times that the Holy Ghost is unctioning you when He wakes you up. This is for me. I'm preaching on me. This is the times that He wakes you up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And you know it's Him. You wake up and you're laying there and you're wide awake and you know God's wanting you just to get up and open your Bible and listen to Him for a minute. And you're like, no, i got to go. i got to sleep. You know, i got to wake up at 6 and go to work work but no guess what he's wanting to just spend a little bit of time with you and what you don't realize is if you just get up and you spend that time with him you're going to wake back up at six o'clock if you get one hour of sleep or if you get no more hours of sleep and you're going to be re rested and refreshed greater that day than you ever have been when you go against it, you're going to wake up all tired and messed up and your flesh and all that. And you're going to be sitting there because you've been in disobedience and you didn't get up when the master said, hey, get up, I need to talk to you. You ain't on your time, you're on his time. I just got that. You can judge this borrow time. <laughs> That's his time, not ours. So it's those little foxes, it's those little disobedience, it's those little times. It's those little times you come into worship and you don't want to worship. It's those little things that you don't want to press in, that you don't want to respond. You start to backpedal, you start to back up. All of a sudden your witness ain't as strong because you're under this condemnation, you're under this, you're under this conviction that you know you ain't doing it all the way right. And you get to where you can't even hardly tell nobody about Jesus. You can't even hardly tell nobody about him. Are you hearing me? But God said, I'm restoring boldness. God said, I'm going to begin to awaken the fire in the pulpit again. I'm going to begin to ignite this fire again. I'm going to begin to ignite this fire because the oil flows downhill. The oil flows from the headship and it flows down through the body. If the preachers are not on fire... It's going to be hard to stay on fire. You can, but it's going to be tough. Amen. 
Anybody still with me? 2 Timothy 1.7, he said, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, timidity, but of power and of love and of discipline. Power and of love and of discipline. Power, love, discipline. There's something, there's a power, listen to me, that word love, there's a power in love like no other. There's a power in love like no other power. I'm talking about God's love. There's a power in love that held him to the cross. There's a power in your love for the lost like no other. There's a power in your love for your lost loved ones like no other. There's a power in your love for Jesus Christ and him first and foremost in your life like no other. Hallelujah. Go to Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. He says, For a long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Mm. Go to chapter 13 verse 46 real quick. And then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It is necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthily of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles for... Let me see here. Let me see if I'm in the right place here. Hold on. 1346. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthily of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Did you hear that? He was talking to the Jews, must have been. Because he said, you, 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 you judge yourselves unworthily of everlasting life. Lo, so we're going to turn to the Gentiles. So, for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee as a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. See, when they went into the city, watch here, when they went into the city and they began to prophesy and they began to they began to speak the word of God with boldness and love, they began to preach the word of God. It says they got mad. They threw them out of the city. The Jews were stirred up because they were mad because they spoke the word of God with boldness and they confronted them. Are you hearing me? And then all of a sudden they took them out, but guess what they did? Did Barnabas and them cry about it? Did Paul and them cry about it? Because, I, you know, I, I've been kicked out of a lot of places because of the gospel. Guess what I did? I learned. I learned some things along the way I learned just to shake the dust off don't go back keep on going because there's another city that's going there's another area that's going to need it there's another place that needs your witness there's another place that needs to hear the gospel shake the dust off and keep on rolling guess what they ain't none of us been stoned and took outside of the city they ain't none of us faced what Paul faced Paul and Barnabas it says right here though look here Paul and Barnabas they pulled out of their coast they shook off the dust of their feet against them against them as a testimony as a testimony it said that the Bible says that it would be worth for, Jesus said it would be worse for that city in the day of judgment than it was for than it will be for Sodom and Gomorrah the cities that do not receive the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ remember it's not about you remember it's not about me See, when we we got we got to get tough skin. Say that we got to get tough skin. We got to get tough skin. We got to get tough skin. 
We got to quit being so with our feelings on our sleeve. Well, they didn't want to receive it. Well, they, I tell you, I told them my testimony and they just been all hard on me. It ain't about you. It ain't personal. It ain't about you. It's about the one you serve. It's about the one that sent you. It's about the one that commissioned you. If they face some things, we're going to face some things. Nobody wants to hear that kind of preaching because we, 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 we believe in prosperity. We believe all that. But, but you, don't want, you don't want to hear the whole gospel. <laughs> we just want to hear the good parts. <laughs> we don't want to hear the whole truth. Nothing but the truth, so help you God. Can I give you a word? Let me give you a word about Judas. Let me give you this word. I felt this strongly right here. This is good for you. Preachers, listen to me. Preachers online, listen to me. Judas. A lot of us cry about Judas. We cry about, oh, we cry about all that. We cry about everything. You know, oh, my God, they're at the table. Oh, God, I know they don't love me. So, what well, you think Jesus, it happened to him, you think it ain't going to happen to you, you think he's the son of God, he's, you're the son of God, but he's the son of God, was perfect in all his ways, you think it happened to him, and he ain't going to happen to you. Come on, we need to get real in this time. We need to get real and really see what the gospel is. Judas was necessary. He was necessary. The thing that, the thing I remember Apostle Ron said this, and this is, this is something so profound that stuck with me. Listen to me, preacher. He said the thing that made Judas so dangerous was that he really loved Jesus. He really was his friend. Watch this. Judas will always be a friend at your table, and he'll be a friend at your enemy's table too. <laughs> I've given you a key. He'll be a friend at your table, but he'll be a friend at your enemy's too. Plays both sides. Man, it's quiet in here. Well, it had me judging myself. When Apostle said it, I went, man, I'm going here judging myself. I'm, I'm going to bring my loyalty up to another level. I'm going to bring my, amen, I'm going to bring some things up to another place. I'm going to bring my integrity up to another place. I'm going to, I'm going to stop, I'm going to, you know, amen, I'm going to bring it up to another place. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to walk a little higher, amen. Amen. Judas, Judas wasn't meant, Judas was there to expose him, but to, to he was the one that helped with his promotion. Oh, man, I've got into something here. <laughs> I've got... Yeah, there you go, because I just replaced them. Follow me now. Don't, 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 don't shut me down now. I know y'all thinking now. Amen. Very important to judge yourself. Judas had a choice. He didn't have to go through with that. People say, well, it's prophesied. He had to go through with it. No, Jesus just knew the decision that he was going to make. He was going to make it no matter what. No matter what was said. He was going to make that decision. But he didn't have to. Amen. That's good preaching, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That was deep. I didn't know whether to even say it in here. I figured Sunday nights, though, we got, 
we got more more people that's hungry, that's wanting to go further with God, and not a lot of baby Christians. You know what I mean? We got some online, but but those things are good because they make us judge ourselves and they make us say, where are we at? What are we doing? Let's grow in integrity. Let's grow in loyalty. Let's grow together as one. Let's grow in, in these things. But we 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 all growing and developing. I want let me let me take you a little further with this so I don't leave you right there cut like that. Watch this. Judas, he was friends with Jesus and the disciples, and he was so good that they didn't even know who it was. When Jesus said, one of you is sitting here is going to betray me. The, the disciples, Jesus knew who it was, but the disciples didn't know who it was. They were like looking around like, is it me, Lord? Is it me? He said, is it me? Is that John? Is that her? Him? They didn't even know who it was. And he said, the one that dips with me. What's this? He had two sets of friends, meaning he played both sides. Watch this. He didn't play with other Christians. He played with the world. He was he talked like the world when he was with them because he they them were them were worldly people. He talked he he blended in with them. And guess what? When he was at the disciples' table, he blended right in with them. He was like a chameleon. Oh, come on, Pastor, you preaching. You preach Fire's going to come back in the pulpit again. He was a chameleon. When he was with the world, he talked like the world. They didn't know no different. There was no salt. There was no light. But when he became back, see, he knew enough of Christian lingo that when he sat back at the Lord's table, he knew enough to sit around, and he was so good that the disciples didn't even know it. The disciples didn't even know it because he knew the holy talk. My God, we into something tonight. We into something tonight. Friends in the world, listen to me. I don't have friends in the world. Let me help you with something. I don't have worldly friends. I don't have sinner friends. Preacher, what you mean? I just was just what I said. Mark it down. I don't have sinner friends. There ain't nobody amen in that, but I don't care. I write that down on Facebook. I don't have sinner friends. I don't, I, I don't sit in the council of the ungodly. I witness to sinners. I love them and want their soul to be saved. I witness to them. I'm alive to them. I'm salt to them. I'm not their friend. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. I said, if you're a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. Nobody wants fire in the pulpit. You want something to pep, pep, pep you up, pat you on your rear end, tell you you're okay. No, you're not okay. We just funnel them straight into hell. Just so you can be a seed in our, our, our pew. So we can tell everybody, well, we have full house tonight. How many of them's dead and going to hell? How many of them saved and on their way to heaven? Amen. Boy, I felt the liberty on that one. I felt liberty on that. So watch this. I'm going to camp on that for a second just to let you know. Because they're probably going, I don't know what all they're going to say. But here's, here's the thing. Listen to me. I don't have friends that sinners. I don't hang out with them. I don't go where they go. I don't talk like they talk. That's why they get uncomfortable when I'm around. That's why they don't like me when I'm around. Because <laughs> you're supposed to be a lot. If you're sitting at home with them, there ain't no conviction. There's something wrong with you. If you're walking in real holiness, if you're walking real close to God, even most of the Christians will want to get to the side of you they don't even want to be around you there's something in them that don't want to be around you either they Christian but they ain't living as close as you living they ain't living where you live and they ain't walking in what you walking in so when they start to uh, like that and you know your walk with God and you know how close you are with him don't worry about it it ain't you it's them 
I'm setting you free from some things. It ain't you, it's them. It's them that's got something. They know they ain't lining up all the way and you convicting them. They're like, well, I got to go. I, I used to think that. I used to think there's something wrong with me. They'd like, I got to go. They'd talk to me real short, and then they'd got to leave real quick. And I thought, man, what is it, right? I just come out of the woods in the wilderness. You know, I still got honey on me. I still got, I'm still eating honeycomb. I still got the honey all over me. Why? From being in the wilderness, from being back there praying, and praise God. And now, you know what? Hey, I thought you'd love me. I got sweet stuff all over me. Here, you want some of it? Here's you some honey. Here's you some honey. And they're like, eh, got to get away, got to get away. Oh, yeah. Who that? The Baptist? That's Derek the Baptist. You hear me? Derek the Baptist Costals. <laughs> He's not a Baptist. He's a Batacostals. That's for my Baptist brothers. He's not a Baptist. He's a Batacostals. He's one old Baptist guys that get a gnat saved and then he'll get him filled with the Holy Ghost. And shut up, ba ba ba, sick, hit, 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 God, when we gonna get some boldness, and when we gonna be, when we gonna be afraid, when we start preaching again, when we gonna start praying again, when we gonna start doing what we need to do again, when we gonna start walking, coming up out of there with honey all over us, out of the wilderness where we've been in there fasting, and we found a beehive. Praise God, and we got that out of there. We come out there looking all crazy, ready to take a shower and everything. They said, "My God, the glory's on them." God, God, what's going on with them? Come on, Jesus. I'm just going to let it rip from now on. Let it fall where it falls. Why? Because as I'm sitting back there watching the cameras, God said, it ain't about you. I said, that's right, Lord. Fill me with boldness. I beat a man. I beat it, man. I'll be your man. Isaiah, what did he say? He said, send me, Lord. I'll go. Send me down there. I'll go tell them. Praise God. Send me. I'll be a light. Praise God. They might throw me out of the city. But guess what? I'm going to go out of it. I'm going to dust my feet off. And I'm going to go on to the next one. You ever heard that song? On to the next one. It probably ain't even a good song. On to the next one. On to the next one. I'm on to the next one. On to the next. Sometimes you stay crying at the city gate like, Oh, they didn't receive me. Oh, my God. They didn't receive me. They thought all kind of bad stuff about me. Yeah, I've got some of your numbers too. I know what he's talking about. Oh God, Lord, please, please. He said, dust off and go on, man. My God, quit wasting your time. Go on. Somebody will receive you down through there. They'll take you in and feed you and listen to the gospel and listen to what's being said and you can manifest my kingdom down there. My God, I need the kingdom to advance. They don't want it. Go on. They were places that Paul and them were forbidden to go. The Holy Ghost forbid them to go to some places. He said, do not go down there. Do not go down there. That's why he said the word was a lamp, a lamp and a light. He said, he that is led by the Spirit of God is a son of God. He that is led by the Spirit of God is a son of God. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm led into the wilderness. Oh, you don't want to be led there. Jesus was. It said he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? The Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted. When you come out of the wilderness, you come out of the wilderness, you come, or you come out of your prayer closet filled up, guess what? The Holy Spirit leads you into the wilderness. What for? To be tempted. Why? Because he got he, he got to allow you to be crushed. He got to allow you to go through that so you can have something to bring out. So you can come out in the power of the Holy Spirit. So you can come out with the oil flowing right. You don't go through crushing. You don't get new wine. Come on, we need to get real about Christianity. I don't even like to say the word Christianity. I'm a son of God. I'm a son in a kingdom. My Lord is king. And my daddy, he's daddy. I'm a son in this kingdom. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. You joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You're not sub heirs. You joint heirs. If you realize who you are, you'll stop walking in your mess. If you realize who you are, you'll walk up out of it. The enemy's just deceived you and who you are. 
But when he came out, he was led into the wilderness to be tempted. I just come out of the worst wilderness season I've ever been in. I had to go there. My gosh. It's necessary. Say that it's necessary. It's necessary. What do you say about diverse temptations? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy that He would empower you and allow you to be tempted. Allow you to be tried that your faith would come forth as gold. Allow you to go through the fire that the gold would come through it more pure on the other side than it was when it went in. That the impurities in you be burned out in the fire. Tried. If you're real gold, you come through the fire, you're going to be more pure real gold on the other end. The only thing that burns up in the fire is fool's gold. So those of you that have been through the fire, they've been through the fire, they've been through the fire, at least you know what you got's real. I didn't say you was perfect, but you real, but you working on it. God's working on you. Come on, man. This, this, I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting fed. I hope this is helping you. I'm going to bring it to a close and pray for some of you. I see boldness. See, I prayed. God filled me. With the Holy Ghost and boldness, 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 boldness. I don't mean attacking people. That means boldness and then love. What I spoke to you and preached to you is in love. And it ain't personal with nobody. I just preach it. Let it fall where it falls. But God didn't give you a spirit of timidity. He gave you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Discipline. Discipline mind. Discipline yourself. Power and love. The righteous are as bold as a lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion that will not back down. Not when it comes to righteousness and truth. Not when it comes to compromise. I love you and I'll pray for you, but I'm not going to sin with you. Amen. I'll do everything I can to help you. I'll do everything I can to pull you up out of it. But I won't let you stay around me without witnessing to you. I won't let you stay around me as a lost person without telling you the gospel. I won't let you forget it. I won't let you live it. One of the two things is going to happen if me and you is around each other and you lost. I'll tell you something. One of two things is going to happen. You better listen. One of two things are to happen when you're around lost people out there in the world or wherever it is that you're around them. One of two things, either they're going to run from you or they're going to get saved. Because I'm not going to quit until one of the two happens. You're either going to leave my presence or I'm going to see you saved. I talked to a guy the other day. I'm not going to give you no details because they're going to know who it is. But I talked to a guy the other day, and here's what I said. I went with him. He's a, he's a business owner, and I was in the car with him. I said, you're a Christian? Yeah. Yeah, he's Christian and everything like that. There was a guy working for him, and he'd been working there for I said, is he saved? He said, I don't know. I said, you telling me you got, you got somebody working for you, and you don't know if they're saved? How long? 20 years? 20 years? And you don't know? I said, brother, are you a Christian? Yeah. And you got somebody working for you, been there 20 years, and, and you don't know? You asleep. You dead in the water. You dead in the water. I told you I'm going to preach on you. If they go to hell next to you, get your fault. Come on, church. Anybody want, anybody want to hear that? Can anybody want to hear that? The ball's in your court. 
I remember being at work. I remember working. I was there to do a job. I wasn't there just to preach to them while I'm doing my job because that wouldn't be right because I'm there to do a job and I'm doing the best quality I can, the best work that I can, uh, as unto the Lord, not to men. When I worked for a company, I worked for that boss and I worked for him as unto the Lord. I was loyal to him. I was loyal to the time. I was loyal to the company. I was, I was there. I didn't let it come before my church time or anything like that, but I was loyal to it. and my, that, that was what showed what I had more than anything. But when times come up, they knew I was a Christian. I was bold about it. I stood about it. I prayed for them. And guess what? There was a conflict the whole time I was there, and that's okay. I remember one time I got, I'm going to leave you with this. Watch this. I remember one time I started because I was always alone on lunch break. And all them would all be sitting around. They were all lost. Well, there was a couple of them that claimed to be Christians, but they told the same jokes they told. They told the dirty joke. They talked about their old ladies. Guess what? That ain't a Christian. And I'm not going to sit there with you while you talk about your old ladies and talk about your live-in girlfriends and boyfriends and all that stupid stuff. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to sit around with you. Some of you need to get some boldness. Some of you need to get some holiness about you. Some of us need to get some gumption about us. And be real about what we say we are. Well, I love them. Yeah, but what about Jesus? How much do you love Him, compromiser? Yeah. Guess what? I sat there alone. So one time I got all pitiful and I got all in myself. And I said, well, I guess I got I to go over here and sit with them. I can't do this. They'd always talk about me. You know, oh, you don't want to sit with us. You're too holy, ain't you? Finally, I did. I said, well, I'd go read my Bible on my break, and I'd go pray, and then I'd go back into the battlefield and do my work and do my job. And, and, and my goal was to be a witness, to be a, to be a witness with my work ethic, my integrity, but to also, when the time comes up, to pray for them, but let them see something that was real. Because the goal was to win them all. Watch well, what I'm telling you. So I'll go over and I sat with them one day and here they go showing each other porn on the phones and all kind of craziness. I sat there for about 10 minutes and it's about all I could do that I didn't snap on them. Here's this one talking about his living girlfriend all the, talking about this one. They talking bad about that. that I'm mean, talking bad about their wives and everything. I said, look, I got to go. I'm not sitting here with you. And I got, I don't care what you say about me. But you know who they come to when something happened in their family? They come to the preacher. They come to preacher man and say, can you pray for us? Can you, can you pray for us? Yes, sir, I'll pray for you. I sure will because I love you and I pray for you every, before I, I prayed for them every single day that I was at that job. Before I went to work and guess what, when I left, they all left and I would stay on that job and I would go out there and I would get on my knees and I would begin to pray heaven down for them. Every single day I was there. I'm fixing to close. I see some of you yawning. I know it's time. We got to make some choices. I told you it's going to be a revival fire. I told you he's, he's igniting a fire in the pulpits again. People might differ with me on this. Well, it's the kingdom. You're advancing the kingdom. Yeah, I'm advancing it. That's what I said. If you lost, you're either going to get saved or you're going to get away from me. I'm not, I'm not your friend. I love you. And I'm going to share the truth that will set you free. I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to do you like all the rest of them did. I'm going to tell you there's a way out. There's a way out of it for you. Jesus loves you, and I love you. See, love, we look at love the wrong way. Well, i gotta, I got to go with them. No, I don't. No, I don't. It's not love. Love says, I can't go down that road with you, and this is why. And they look at you, and they're like, something different about them. They ain't compromising. There's something different about them. What they preach, what they say, they, they, they live it. What is that? What is that? Hold on. Now, this ain't like the other Christians I've seen. Now these other ones would go have a sip with me. I didn't even know they were Christians until I seen them going into the church. I didn't know they were Christians at the bar. I didn't know there was a Christians, you know, out there. I didn't know that because they listened to the same music I listened to. They they drank the same drinks I drank. They I didn't know they was a Christian. 
they just like me. But now I see somebody that's real and I say, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. There's something different about them. What is that? I want, I want what you got. Now, you love different. You, you're very nice to me. You're, you're kind to me. You love me, but you don't go where I'm going. You don't talk the way I talk. You don't do the things that I do. Now, what is this? Let me tell you about this Jesus that I that I serve. Let me tell you about this God that has set me free, and I, I can't I can't I can't deny him. I can't I can't I can't go and do anything that displeases him. See, and I love you that much that I won't do that. Now hold on a second. Now let me hear about this Jesus here. Let me hold on. I'm stuck in this addiction. I'm stuck in this lifestyle, and I'm really miserable. <laughs> I want to hear about this, Jesus. See, I'm not talking about going out there and beating them up and telling them how now good they are. And That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about walking in the love of God. I'm talking about kindness. I'm talking about love. But I'm talking about in those times when you know that, like they're carrying on conversations that you know is not right, back away from them. I don't have to condemn them. I just say, look, I just, I just got a distance. I got to go over here. I can't. Why ain't you over here? This is why I'm not over here, okay, if they ask me. Because I'm not, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, and guess what? I'm not going to partake in the way that you're talking. I'm not going to listen to you talk about your wife and run her down. I'm not going to listen to you over here talking about your pornography and all your mess. I'm not going to listen to it, okay? That's why. Because I love God, I love, I love Him, and I love you. But I can't do it. You know somebody's going to look at you and they're going to be like, Now this person right here, now they real. I'm fixing to close right now. I'm fixing to close. Pastor, you preached on us. Come on. Hallelujah. We're going to close with that. Listen, Facebook, we love you guys. I pray that y'all have been blessed, but I pray that if this has shook you. But listen, this thing's not going to stop. It's just starting right now. God said, I'm igniting the fire in the pulpits again. And we need to hold boldness again like never before. We need to speak some things like never before. Why? Because the souls of man's at stake. The integrity of our church is at stake. Amen. And we love you. Jesus loves you. Reach out to us. We will pray for you. We will believe God with you. We'll do everything we can to see you saved, to see you set free, delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.